and they're going to be pulling anybody in it that they can pull with them. The key to them to have the capacity to, to do it is whether or not you're subject to them, whether or not they really lawfully have jurisdiction. Do mm. you understand? Now, I know a lot of you understand the trinity of jurisdiction, and some of you don't. However, write down this, the trinity of jurisdiction is personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction, and territorial jurisdiction. These are principles, I'm not going to go into them too much because of the time period, because there's so many other things that, that I want to address to help you. But try to take these principles, and if you don't get it today, make sure you do a little research so you can understand it. Because whenever you're going into court for tickets, if IRS approaches you, or if you're going to court for foreclosure under chancery judge, every one of them is springboarding off the 14th Amendment. Are we clear? Does everybody first understand what I just said? I want to make sure everybody understands what I said. Any legal action that involves us, when people look like this, springboards off the 14th Amendment. You understand? That's the foundation. Now, that's the foundation for also all corporate beings, which, of course, then you must know the two types of person at law. You must be aware of that. And everyone needs to be aware of that while we're making this treatise in order to understand why we're saying what we're saying and what you need to know. And some things may not be said, but you need to have that in your knowledge base already. You've got to have a background. You understand? Two types of persons at law. The word person does not mean this physical being. The word person means a corporation which is artificially constructed on paper by legal process. When you're making reference to this being person, it's a natural person or either a divine being manifest in human flesh. Those are the two lawful terms. And because it's wordy, a lot of people dismiss it and then start using the abbreviation, which is dangerous. Do you understand? Everybody clear? Now, you must know that when we go back to 1865 and understand when the House and the Senate was dealing with this issue, the legal concept of mind that they were in while uh, presenting the proposals from the radical Republicans for the 14th Amendment after the Civil War issues. Are we clear? So you must put things in context, in law, grammatically correct, when this amendment was proposed before the Congress. Are we clear? Now there's political facts that are involved that most schools won't teach people, but yet all of our people should know because that is the legal instrument by which they've bureaucratized slavery. Now understand that slavery is a connotative presentment, but it's actually peonage. Do you understand? But peonage was institutionalized with the 14th Amendment, and they cover it with the connotative word slavery, which is really what it's not. And that's to muddy the water so that when people begin to get a little bit more brighter than a 15-watt bulb and start figuring this thing out, when they start looking for remedy, they won't find it. Do you understand? Because if you go to a court talk about slavery, They'll hear it and it's emotional, but you're not slaves because that's a that's a nationality of Slovakians. You understand? Because in law, what you say is what you mean. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? All right. So be be aware the distinction between connotative linguistics and denotative linguistics. What things really are, as opposed to what you believed they were, because they will kick you up. Because they are what. Slaveholders. And its nature is, is a humanistic fraud by necessity of Roman conquest. Do you understand? 
So when you're looking at Europeans and what they do in America, in, in the Americas, if you don't have it in your mind that they're Romans, you're going to approach this whole thing wrong. You understand? Roman, the word Roman means red man. You understand? Yeah. And when the Bible, Quran, Waspi, Torah, all of the holy books refer to the Romans, they mean the Paleolithic breed of hybrid modern man beings that are referred to as Europeans. Collectively. Not just the city of Rome in Italy. Do you understand? So if you look at this wrong, your concepts will be wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? All right. Understanding that, you must also understand that when Europeans in North America who are falsely calling themselves Americans, but they're colonists, so in order to kill the culture, they must steal the birthright. Do you understand? So they'll call themselves Americans so that the successive generations of people who have been put in peonage will forget who they are, as well as forget who they themselves are, in order for them to usurp the sovereign authority that actually belonged to you by birthright. This is why the fiction of racism was presented to you for an argument, to move you away from what's really wrong so you can't solve problems. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is done by what is known as symboliographers. Symboliographers are people who are trained to draft documents, writs, wills, etc. in the art of altering linguistics. Do you understand? What's referred to in the Bible as the Tower of Babel is really symboliography or the art of lawyers of altering language, introducing connotations to bury the etymon or the mother of truth. You understand? It's an art form. This is why the Bible in the book of Jose refers to the lawyers as the scum that they really are, and the problem with the earth. Also, with C.M. Bay, when he registered the Zodiac Constitution in the Library of Congress, when infiltrators came into the Moorish Science Temple, etc., to un try to undermine Nur Ali, he registered the Zodiac Constitution in the Copyright Office of the Library of Congress of the United States so they couldn't tamper with it. This is why it says, when you hire a lawyer, you've given them your birthright. So if you don't know the truth about nationality and birthright, as soon as you walk with them, you've already given up your birthright. And so the very people you've trusted to uphold the law are the very ones who have usurped it. Are we clear? When it comes to you protecting your rights, you must have this in the background of your knowledge, just like a child, when you become an adult, no one discusses you whether you know your ABCs. They, they expect you to already have that knowledge. It's not, it's, it's not debatable. They expect you to write, to do things, to be able to sign contracts, to be able to travel the land, to take care of business. When you demonstrate that you're incapable of that, they will list you as incompetent and wards of the state, which of course what they have done with people whose education they've had control over. Such persons have been listed as corporations under the 14th Amendment. That's bureaucratized slavery. Do you understand? Logically, they don't suspect it because they thought they were free. So they never questioned it because someone told them they were free. Do you understand what I'm saying? When most of them don't, don't even know anything about a lodial property, a lodial title, a lodial self. They're not, they're not, it's not even in the culture. Of course, it's not necessary for people who are held to peonage under the connotative word slavery. You see the point? In other words, they're buried, they're buried and buried. But yet, it's beneath the surface, but yet it's in the open. Yes. 
This is what the necessity of the Christian Black Codes of 1724 played a part in to cover up the bureaucratization of slavery on the 14th Amendment. So the Black Codes was put in place to regulate this. You don't understand? So if you don't know about the Black Codes, you don't understand how these municipalities are run. They don't have a double standard of law because that which is color of law ain't law. However, it is policies of the folks of Rome that are used against people who are called people of color, which means fake people, which means non-human. You understand? To give you some foundation, we're going to go to law book, which all people in law, government, Congress, the Senate, etc., know, but won't tell you, including your quote-unquote leader guys who keep writing black books. Mm. So you can't.